Adapted from The Three Feathers by Jacob and Wilhelm Grimm. Once upon a time there was a king who had three sons, of whom two were clever and wise. The third did not speak much and was simple, so he was called Simpleton. When the king had become old and weak and was thinking of his end, he did not know which of his sons should inherit the kingdom. So the king said to his sons, Go forth, and he who brings me the most beautiful carpet shall be king after my death. So that there should be no dispute among them, he took them outside his castle, blew three feathers into the air, and said, You shall go as they fly. One feather flew to the east and another to the west, but the third flew straight up and soon fell to the ground. One brother went to the right and the other to the left, so that Simpleton was forced to stay where the third feather had fallen. He sat down and was sad, but then he saw a trap door close by the feather. He raised it up and found some steps and went down them. Then he came to another door, knocked on it, and heard somebody inside. The door opened and he saw a great fat toad sitting there. Around her was a crowd of little toads. The fat toad asked what he wanted. He answered, I should like to have the prettiest and finest carpet in the world. A young toad brought out a box and the fat toad opened it. She pulled out a carpet so beautiful and so fine that on the earth above, none could have been woven like it. She presented it to Simpleton. He thanked her and then ascended again. Why should we give ourselves a great deal of trouble to search, said the two older brothers. They got some coarse handkerchiefs from shepherds' wives to carry home to the king. At the same time, Simpleton also came back bringing his beautiful carpet. When the king saw it, he was astonished and said, If justice be done, the kingdom belongs to the youngest. But the two others entreated the king to make a new agreement with them. So their father changed his mind. He who brings me the most beautiful ring shall inherit the kingdom, he declared. He led the three brothers out and blew into the air three feathers. Simpleton's feather once again flew straight up and fell down near the door leading into the earth. He went down again to the fat toad and told her that he wanted the most beautiful ring. She at once ordered her great box to be brought and picked out a ring that sparkled with radiant jewels. Meanwhile, the two eldest brothers knocked the nails out of an old carriage ring and took it to the king. When Simpleton produced his ring, his father again said, the kingdom belongs to him. The two eldest tormented the king until he set a third condition. He declared that the one who brought the most beautiful woman home should have the kingdom. He again blew the three feathers into the air and they flew as before. Again, Simpleton went down to the toad and said, I am to take home the most beautiful woman. The toad gave him a yellow turnip that had been hollowed out, to which six mice were harnessed. The toad said, just put one of my little toads into it. Simpleton seized one out of the circle and put her into the yellow coach. Immediately she turned into a wonderfully beautiful maiden, and the turnip into a coach, and the six mice into horses. Simpleton kissed her, and the two drove off to see the king. His brothers came afterward. They had given themselves no trouble at all to seek beautiful girls, but had brought with them the first peasant woman they chanced to meet. When the king saw them, he said, After my death, the kingdom belongs to my youngest son. But the two eldest demanded that the one whose wife could leap through a ring that hung in the center of the hall should inherit the kingdom. They thought, The strong peasant woman can do that easily, but the delicate maiden will jump herself to death. The aged king agreed to this condition. Then the two peasant women jumped through the ring, but they were so stout that they fell and broke their legs. The pretty maiden then sprang through as lightly as a deer, so all opposition had to cease. Simpleton finally received the crown, and he has ruled wisely ever since.